If you're someone new to the Yakuza series, Yakuza 0 can be a very unusual experience. It has a lot going on, lots of different things to see and do, and it can take a little while before you know how to indulge in all the awesome little pockets of content spread throughout the game. I know in my first playthrough, I missed lots of incredible things It took a replay for me to discover, but fear not, in this video, I'm going to give you some tips so that you can enjoy Yakuza 0 to its fullest and get the best experience the first time. I am Chill, and this is the ultimate Yakuza 0 Beginner's Guide. When first starting out, some people may wonder, what difficulty to choose? Know that you can change the difficulty anytime as long as you are not in a combat situation. On normal, you can also change the difficulty if you fail a fight and or try two more times in a row. Otherwise, the primary difference between normal and hard is that on normal, you can pick up recovery items during long battles, while they are removed on hard and above. While some boss battles can be more challenging, the challenge is reduced a bit by the use of weapons that you can buy. Some people have played the whole game without realizing you can buy and use weapons, but you can. More on that in a bit. Another thing to do when you first start the game is to go into settings, go to display tips, and set the option for more. What will this do? It will provide you very helpful notifications while you play, for example, progression updates about your business, as well as when you unlock a video. You'll thank me later. As you continue to play Yakuza 0, you might notice the game hops back and forth between two notable protagonists. Kazama Kiryu, who lives in Kamurocho, a fictional location based on Kabuchinko in Japan's Shinjuku, and Majimo Goro, who lives in Satenbori, based on Japan's Osaka. These are very notable locations that are prominent in the Yakuza series and spin-offs. Every two chapters of the story in Zero, you will switch from Kiryu to Majima until the end of the game. Know that most of the features and activities available in Kiryu City are also available in Majima's. Once you finish the game and unlock Premium Mode, you'll be able to switch between the characters and take a taxi between the two cities at will. More on Premium Mode in a moment. Completion points are a special currency you can use to purchase different items and upgrades from the clown, Babu, Sanamaya, and the Shrine. Bob will give you the DLC items you get for free with the game, as well as weapons, costumes, materials for crafting, and pocket circuit car parts. At the shrine next to Bob, you can purchase all kinds of upgrades, including items for adventure, battle, and business. You can purchase upgrades to run faster, a recommended item called the Card Watcher that helps you find telephone cards whenever they're in the area, and you can unlock improvements for the business of the character you're playing as. Know that both Kiryu and Majima have their own side businesses they operate apart from the main story, and the upgrades at the shrine will serve to develop them. You'll also want to fully complete these side business campaigns to experience all of the content in the game, so make sure to visit the shrine to spend all of your points as soon as you have enough. The shrine or temple is at different locations depending on the city you're in. When playing as Kiryu, you'll find Bob in the shrine near the center of the map on Nakamichi Alley. While playing as Majima, you'll find the temple on the road through the southwestern part of the map. Also note that completion points you earn on Kiryu do not carry over to Majima or vice versa, so you'll have to earn and purchase all of the upgrades available on the character in question. Premium mode is available after you complete the main story. It's basically a post-game free roam. After you complete the game, you have the choice to start with a clear save or not. If you start with a clear save, you can treat it like a true post-game because you'll be left exactly as you were when you finish the game with all of your progress intact. Also, after you've completed the main game, you'll be able to wear all of the costumes and skins you've unlocked when talking to Bob the Clown. This mode is ideal for completing all achievements or trophies you still want to complete. After equipping the weapons you've acquired into the appropriate slots in the equipment section, all you have to do is press down while in a fight and take out your weapon for use in battle. Then all you have to do is start swinging and shooting. The more you practice using the weapons, the more you'll be able to use them effectively. Just know that they come with limited charges, and after they run out, you won't be able to use them again until you've repaired them. To repair weapons, you need to go to an establishment called the Dragon and Tiger. You'll find out more while playing, so I'm not going to say too much. When playing as Kiryu, you can find a Dragon and Tiger shop in the tiny alley north of the empty lot. There are no indicators, you have to walk up there with Kiryu to trigger a cutscene. You will then have access. Always read the descriptions on the various accessories you have before equipping them. One player I know had equipped an item called the Calming Blanket, so he couldn't generate any heat. He ended up deleting his save files without knowing what was wrong, so be careful to read the descriptions. When you go to the Start menu, you will see this bar under the difficulty indicator reading Battle Bonus Reward. These are multipliers that increase the amount of cash you acquire while in battle. 
So using a weapon increases the multiplier, fighting Mr. Shakedown increases the multiplier, and so on. You can also earn additional bonuses from certain actions in battle. To see these bonuses, press start right after you finish a fight. There in bonus details, you'll see other things you can do to increase the cash you take in. Bonus rewards can also be increased by spending completion points at the battle tab at the shrine or temple. When wondering which skills to level first, you can't really make any mistakes when it comes to purchasing upgrades, but I recommend investing your money in yellow health nodes first. After that, you might want to look into attack strength. When you feel that's sufficient, you can start picking out new moves for the fighting style you use most often. Some players recommend prioritizing health from Majima while focusing on attack damage for Kiryu, but either distribution will be acceptable for either character. If you're wondering how to access some of the locked sections of the ability wheels, these areas open up upon completion of certain side content, but I'll leave it to you to discover which particular sections of content those are. You might be wondering what to do with the plates that come into your possession. Know that these items are very valuable, and some of them sell for considerable sums of money. There is a pawn shop located in the southern portion of the map. This is also a place where you can unload any other valuables you may have no use for, including prizes won from claw machines or random fish in your possession. There are missable achievements or trophies depending on which platform you're playing on. I recommend focusing on just enjoying the game for your first playthrough. You'll have opportunities to knock out all of these achievements in New Game Plus or Legendary Mode. When it comes time for you to hunt down achievements, I recommend Dashi's 100% completion guide on Steam linked below. Just be careful when you look because some of these guides have spoilers. And that's all of the things I feel you should know to get the most out of your first experience with the game. While playing the series, you're going to come upon some mini games that you may or may not know how to play. If you are going for completion, you're going to have to invest a little time into learning these games, as the in-game tutorials may not be enough to cement your grasp. I plan on releasing video guides for all the mini games in the Yakuza series, so to avoid missing those, don't forget to subscribe. Is there anything else you have questions about in Yakuza 0? Please let me know in the comments. Please drop a like if inclined, and I'll see you later in Camarocho.